Hey guys, there's a big release coming out from BaileyWiki today. There's a lot of really cool basic Foundry functionality. If you're on the advanced tier, there's some really neat 3D stuff. And we're gonna walk you through it. From, just to give you a high level, on the basic side, you've got an expansion of the affluent district assets. Tons more assets that you guys can use, mix and match. They're even colorable now, so you can do a bunch of stuff there. There's a lot of new tiles and other things that you can drop in and make a bunch of scenes yourself, or you can start with or just use out of the box all these already made scenes that we've made using those sets. We also have the Endless Road. This is super fun. And if you like scrolling battle maps, you have a ton of them now. I mean, with all the combinations, you've got probably like dozens of combinations of scrolling battle maps here. And we can make more. So let us know in the comments if you'd like to see us make additional and in, in more types of of layered maps like this. I'm not gonna go into detail because I've already uh, deployed uh, along with this video a uh, detail on how to use tile scroll and how to use these maps as well. Although I do have a little bit of tutorial in here if for Patreons who are gonna be using the system. So feel free to jump to that timestamp. And of course, on the 3D side, we've got a bunch of new stuff from Swift, our new 3D art director, including a tavern, an entire modular system, and you can see scenes that he's built using that system within the BaileyWiki compendiums. You can use that stuff. It's already just ready to go to play in, in adventures, or you can just see how he linked them together so you can get your own inspiration. It's got more props and other things, and we'll go into detail with Swift as far as what it, it, that entails. And finally, for Dungeon Draft users, we've got a whole bunch of new Dungeon Draft props and these really, really cool overlay paths that you can use where you can add script and magic circles and other things. These things are colorable. They're built to work directly inside Foundry or inside Dungeon Draft. They're super flexible. I'm going to be using these in a lot of things, and you'll see us developing more paths like this that you can use to embellish really any map that you're working on. Some really cool metallic stuff all the way to you know basic script that you can lay on anything and be able to have uh, writing uh, that just kind of adds more depth and plot line to your maps. So with that, let's jump into the release. So I'm going to show you for my Patreon some details about these scenes that I didn't do in the main tutorial. Uh, first of all, if you want to come in here and manipulate these things, uh, just turn on your tile layer and you can come in here, uh, come into triggers and see how these things are set up and what kind of actions they're using. Same thing over here. You can see that these basically on a click by anyone, although you can make it just by a GM, they will change dress one, right? So when you look at the tiles that are stacked here, they have different tags. This one is called overhead one, right? Whereas this one down here is called overhead two. And they're calling out these tiles over here. So if I go to my foreground layer and I drag out tile sort, and I click on one of these tiles, you can see this one is high overhead one. It's also got the scrolling tile. So high overhead one is going to correspond to this. So this is going to change this particular tile if I click on it. So if I go to my token layer and I click on this, it's going to change that topmost tile. This tile is going to move the fastest across the screen. And generally how I have it set up is if there are two, a top and a bottom to a tile, meaning I've separated the top and the bottom, then this will just change the top. But if I've left it as one tile, like you saw with those clouds, this is just one single tile. This one is the master sort of rotator there that'll rotate that image. Likewise, if there's, uh, here I'll show you like those trees, these are just split, right? So these only change the trees, the dead trees on one side. And that's all I've got them set to cycle through. All these do is trigger the cycling process. Like here, um, there's some wagons and things like that that will spawn on the top. And likewise, I have wagons that will spawn on the bottom. Here's a wagon that just spawned on the bottom. The, the dressing though, if I don't want wagons and instead I want something like bridges, this, this one dressing in bridges also toggles the bridges. Here's a wood bridge. When it comes to like scrolling wilderness, I just kept it to a select subset of tiles. So you can see if you dig into any of these, like even if I just dig into my background tile, if I double click on that, again, I'm using tile scroll by Ripper, it's free. If I go to triggers and actions, 
and it says it, when this tile gets triggered, it's going to, it's going to change its image. These are the images that it will select from. So there's actually more images than this in the, uh, the endless road map, but this is just so that you can find yourself to a, a wilderness map and just be able to toggle through what would make sense in a map like this, right? So you can make it snowy and you can have a river, but that's it. Keeps it simple so that you don't end up sort of endlessly toggling through options. Now down here, you should probably know how these work as well. Sounds can be toggled, meaning I can just turn towns on or I can turn it off. And if I go to my sound layer, you can listen to some of these. So right now water is turned on. Now it's off. So you can really just toggle these on and off as much as you like. So have as many uh, set up and created. This is just a kind of a darker um, wood. Now, some of these I've changed between these different maps. They're just sounds that just don't ever make sense for particular maps. So I swapped it out for something else. And if you want to mute everything, like if these are all on, you can just mute everything by clicking that. Clicking any one of these will turn mute off. Now, weather and effects is, you can't just toggle each one off. It's just either only clouds or only rain or only snow. There's going to be a little bit of a delay while it calculates, FX Master calculates then and applies the new effect. But you can see, you can just toggle between these. If you want more effects than this, then just go straight into FX Master and you can add any effects from here that you want. But just to keep things simple, I've got these effects here. Now you'll notice that these different tiles call different things. This rain tile, for example, it will toggle a sound beacon that is set as sound for rain and it'll mute everything else. And then it'll also just change its, its color. So what it's doing is it's calling out these sound beacons here. See, this one is set for sound winter. That would be triggered by this wind sound. This one is set for sound forest. And you can see it's this forest sound and that's what all of these do here essentially. There's also some special lights in some of these and these lights will toggle on based on some of these things down here. So ethereal and embers that will toggle these, these different things on and off. So like this wouldn't necessarily apply unless maybe this was the Feywild and you want to do something cool like that. You can see it's a pretty quick instant transformation to something like that. You can even recolor these tiles. Remember, these are just regular tiles. So if I wanted to recolor these trees, for example, that blue is probably not the best. Okay, they're only going to be so recolorable, right? You can also, if you ever want to, you can alter this to change other colors. So if I had this little sun set to look for red and then change all the red to something else, if I change this to green, I could actually change the color of these trees in a much uh, more authentic way. So feel free to create a duplicate of this and play around with uh, changing colors um, that, that aren't necessarily red color to start. And remember that you can double up on some of these effects, right? So there's trees on the bottom layer, but you can create trees on the top layer. You can even put like buildings and things like that, right? So you have more effects. See, this now starts to look like there's fog um, sort of interwoven throughout the, the forest, right? So feel free to play around with these until you find an effect that you like. And you can ultimately just make your own map and grab any of the tiles and put them into these different tiers. And you've got a really nice functioning map. And that's it. Also part of the November basic foundry release is an expansion of the affluent district uh, assets. Here you're seeing a bunch of new rooms. I made these in a way that you can link them together. And I show you in sample scenes, how it works with like the castle set and others. But I also made these just to be like boss rooms. And you're just seeing them dressed with some of the new tiles so that you can come in here and play around with it. Notice that they all have colorable versions, colorable meaning this red color, and it works with the uh, dungeon draft um, token magic effects filter, right? So I can come in here and change this to like a purple, for example, and it will turn purple. So I left some of these uncolored so you could see how that works. Some other assets like this alter are also colorable as well. 
this already has a token magic effects filter applied to it. To remove it, you just need to use the token magic delete filters on selected, and you can see it deletes that, and then you can reapply a new one. I don't think you can double up with existing, but these are all colorable. They just happen to be pre-colored when you come in here. So you just have to hit the garbage can to change their color. There's a, a few new platforms. These are all kind of interchangeable. You can see one being used here and you can mix and match. You can kind of put them on top of each other in different types of configurations. You can see how they're all just kind of laid out here. There's a, a lot of new statues that can be resized and you can of course recolor these just using the standard recoloring method. So there's like a darker statue, for example, or if you wanted something green, you can make them green just using the tint. I, I kept them a, a relatively light color. So you could re, just recolor them like you normally would. And you can see how some of the new assets are in here. Some of those assets include some damage tiles. These are damage tiles that you can throw in the middle of one of these. You can see how this tile just hugs that curve. All of these curves, these circles are the same dimensions and size. So you can really easily make uh, stack these on top of each other and and you can see in some of the sample scenes how they can kind of interact together. We also have, uh, here's all of our new statues ready to go. Some new altars, this one being colorable and some new thrones, all of which are colorable. A couple of ladders lying down because it felt like I needed some of those. And if you want to dress up, you know, a, a more damaged space, we've got some bed frames that you can now use to be able to do that. You've also got these colorable benches that are all kind of high end. They've got this sort of uh, marble finish so you can put them into some of your high end things here. And you've got a couple of them just kind of built into statues and, uh, you know, built into the pillars, that sort of thing. These pillars are good if you want to use some marble stairs and things like that as you're building. These help you create some marble accents. We've got, of course, some broken pillars that are also recolorable because they're so light in color, right? So if you had a you know, brick that was maybe that type of color, you can go ahead and make it work that way. These are just some hallway pieces. These are all recolorable. They've all been colored. Again, just remove the token magic effects to get the original color there. These are just so you can link these pieces together with these pieces up here and other things just whatever your creativity has. I've got some more Michael Gelfi audio in this case. I've linked to his Patreon here. If you want to listen to them, you can just go up to here, turn on your headphones. And I picked these two because of the endless road and some audios that I thought that would, would really lend themselves well to that set. And then finally, you've got some new macros. This is just a straight port of the Token Magic Effects macro. It's in that compendium. I also put it in in the Bailey Wiki compendium. There's also this special macro. This makes anything dirty. Let me show you what make let me show you what make dirty does. If I come up here, for example, anything that's got like a gray background or gray tones, if I click the make dirty, you can see it automatically applies the sort of dirt effect. And you can actually increase or decrease it. Depending on what surface you're working with, it may it may be good or bad, right? So this is about where you want it to be. And again, this is just a token magic effects filter. And you can apply it to anything like this too, for example, and it'll make it dirty. Just apply your, your slider. Next up, we have uh, an expansion of all of the modular rooms. In this case, we've got storage rooms because those are so common. You've got kitchens and then you've got uh, ruined rooms, and then you've got ruined entrances. In case you want to make an entirely ruined place and use some of the castle pieces, you have these options here as well. Now, I leave these relatively generic. I don't want to create too many plot devices in them, and that's because I want you guys to be able to create them. You can drop things like trap doors on top of these. You can drop in blood and other things. Remember, they do have bodies that you can drag out and you can dress them inside of a scene. And if you double click them, you can toggle to different formats of bodies. Those are in another district, in this case, district one is where you can find that prefab, but you can drop any tiles into these. And that's really the goal is to let you drop in a, a magic circle. And, and maybe one of these rooms is being used, uh, you know, to teleport. Remember there's empty rooms and things like that. So these are really meant to be 
plot agnostic so that you can just drop them in, bolt them into a particular scene that you're building and they've already come furnished and kind of ready to go, but you can just add tiles on top later. Here we have a magic tower scene. And if we drop our player in and we go into the building, you can see all of the pieces that we've been taking advantage of and building with. The scene again is set up where you can drop in tiles to maybe add a theme or a plot line to this particular room. And you can just see how I've, I've dangled a couple of these uh, modular rooms off of this. You know, we're on the essentially the third floor just to show you how you can add these things and be able to create different types of spaces. This is actually a release uh, from the Magic Tower that was a while back. You can see all of these different pieces kind of at work here. And here we have a teleportation room at the top floor and you can create your own interactions or teleports here if you'd like to. Just want to give you some inspiration. But you can stand out on the balcony and you can look over and have, you know, three dimensional battles all the way up this, you know, six, uh, five story tower. And it's got some ambient sounds. Here we have an affluent castle mashup. This has got a couple of levels itself. We're using some of the bridges and other components from other sets. You walk into this ballroom and then your players can navigate around. So here's like this throne room, right? All using colorable pieces. Went with a purple motif here. Here we're looking over the same throne room so you can have some tactically interesting things here if you'd like to use this for battles. And then up here we've got some sort of meeting area. Rooms themed with props that you can change. These are just different components. You could change this out for something else. And it's just got lights and other things that you can. A crackling fire with some sound and a kitchen over here. Again, just things to give you guys some inspiration on the kinds of spaces that you can make and again, load up with props and do fun stuff. This is the Affluent Church. More pieces. You can see some of the, uh, the mausoleums from other releases in the past. I'm using some of the terrain overlays here too, just to make really interesting ground terrain underneath. You walk into the church and you can hear ambient sound. And there's a rectory that the clergy sleeps in, that sort of thing. And you can navigate around these the rest of it just to see what else is there. This is the ruined villa. You can see I've used the make dirty uh, token magic effects that's custom that is custom by the way i, I uh, altered that so that it would work this way but you can see these are all just tile pieces so you could literally just clean this up by uh, changing out a few of these tiles and uh, removing some of these filters and then adding some intact pillars in that sort of thing uh, but i'll just point out like there's other tiles here just these damaged tiles these soot tiles you can see some of these uh, bloody guard tiles. These are all things that you can change uh, after the fact. And you might need tile sort to be able to navigate things. Here's everything on the bottom level. Here's all of the overhead tiles. Uh, there's a bug with tile sort, by the way. If you go to overhead tiles, you have to drag this out and then down again. Right now you can see this is really uh, mostly... Uh, yeah, it, it'll actually show you the tiles based on what level is active as well. So you can see all the tiles. That are on different levels. So your players can battle their way through here. You can see how I'm using some of these pieces. Like I made a, a uh, enclosed circle here when the, the base piece was not enclosed. These are just things that you can do with the tiles. And I recommend you come in here to kind of deconstruct them. But here we're standing on the level above, looking down at the level below, so you can have some tactically interesting battles. And finally, here's a scene that's very, very simple, but I think you guys will end up using this a lot. This is just a battle, a boss battle, if you will. This is a scene that you set up for a particular skirmish. You can use these, you can see all these uh, different pieces work together. It makes for a really nice 
um, sort of instant decorated scene, right? But this is, again, this is just pieces that are being used together. If we turn up the lights, you can see that is a colorable asset. These are just two platforms stacked on top of each other, a bunch of pillars that have the, you know, automation already set up uh, between them, right? So you can turn these, you know, snuff these out, that sort of thing. You know, a couple of the statues and then just a secret door that hides this room off to the left. So you can build these things really quickly. You can use this as a template and you can see how these different pieces, um, you know, where they came from. If you go into the the tile path, you can see, um, you know, where to find these tiles and things like that. But hopefully this gives you guys some inspiration on what you can build for your boss, boss fights. Hey guys, Swift here. I'm the 3D art director for Bailey Wiki, and I'm bringing you an update for what new 3D content is going to be in the November release for the Foundry Advanced tier. There's two main points of interest uh, for this little clip here. The first one we're looking at is what I'm just calling the Basic Dungeon Tiles set, which is a set of dungeon tiles just like you might have in a real tabletop situation that's intended to be used to create any number of indoor environments. I decided to go for a quite simple design with a somewhat neutral color tone so that they can be used in any number of uh, campaigns in any number of settings to create indoor environments. We're also adding in this set of channels, which likewise are designed to slot together. Uh, we've got shallow decorative ones here, as well as 1Z level deep ones that you could use as tunnels. They're both intended to be used with the basic cube for shaders flat transparent that comes with the 3D canvas map making compendium. You can just spawn one of those in, adjust the size of it, give it some shaders, and uh, have it be used as some quite convincing water there. So before we move on, I just want to do a quick demonstration for uh, how to actually use the tiles. So if you've got these, if you've spawned them in from the uh, tile browser here, or if you just copied them from this scene here, you'd want to right click on one of them, and you'll get this widget here that shows up. Um, it might look like this or like this, but if it does, just press the T key to switch back to the arrows and then hold down control, click and drag one of the arrows and you'll make a copy. And you can continue doing this with uh, your tiles to create a dungeon environment. You can press the R key to rotate and then click and drag one of these rings here. And doing that, they all snap to the grid and they'll be able to make any sort of dungeon environment. I've also got these stairs here, which go up one Z level, I suppose you could call it. Um, let me just adjust their height a little bit so they're nice and level with the ground. There we go. So um, these here are intended to be used with some tiles above the first Z level. A nice easy way to get tiles lined up there is to click and hold the up arrow here and just pull it up by four ticks. So one, two, three, four. And then it just perfectly lines up with the next level of the dungeon if you want to do a multi tier type setup. So you can get some real verticality in there using these tiles. All right, so that's the general idea for the tiles then. On to the next item. The second thing we're adding is the furniture set that's being used in this tavern here, as well as the tavern structure itself, which is a single object that comes either furnished or unfurnished. In the case of the unfurnished one here, all of these pieces of furniture, chairs, tables, crates, barrels, all that, are individual tiles that you can move around, delete, copy, all that sort of thing. Um, and these have likewise been made to be fairly simplistic, uh, but fairly sturdy looking furniture that could be used in any sort of environment. Um, as another aside, these tokens here are being used via the Hero Forge integration that's now in 3D Canvas. Um, for example, this swordsman here, who is the wrong size. Let me just fix that. There we go. This swordsman here. If you open up any token, you go to the 3D tab here, and then you click on Open Hero Forge Browser. Um, what you'll be able to do is link your Hero Forge account in here using a number that you get on the Hero Forge website, and then you have access to all of your Hero Forge minis that you might own, um, custom characters or NPC sets or any of that sort of thing. And obviously they come 
fully textured, fully posed with whatever equipment you like. I'm sure you've all seen HeroForge before, it's a pretty great service. You will need the 3D Portraits module for 3D Canvas. It's one of the premium modules um, available via the Ripper 93's Patreon. However, if you have 3D Canvas, then you're already at the tier where you'd get 3D Portraits. We've also included a couple of pre-built example scenes um, of some of the things we've made with the assets I've been showing you here. We've got the modular dungeon pieces scene that we just started the video on. Old Bandit Hideout, which is a very simplistic micro dungeon just to show you what it can do. The rest haven't is this map here. The Occupied Crypt you might have seen already in the update for 3D Canvas video. And then there's also the Vertical Dungeon, which is a map that I put together using the dungeon tiles and the furniture to create a sort of medium-sized dungeon with a bit of verticality. So this here was created using the 3D dungeon tiles, um, as well as the uh, terrain generator here to fill in the gaps between the walls. And as you can see, it's a fairly complete dungeon here. Also got some Z-levels here using the stairs to go up and up. More rooms here. And then I've also used uh, the 3D canvas shader object, along with some water shaders, fire, and all that sort of thing, to create a good old-fashioned volcano sacrifice layer. So hopefully this map here will give you a bit of inspiration on what you can do for your own maps. So that covers the main points of the new 3D content in November. So I'm going to pass back to Bailey Wiki. New in Dungeon Draft this month, in the Bailiwiki Assets Pack, there are now a host of magic circles and magic writings. There are a variety of different pre-made circles and pieces to create your own. Almost all of these pieces are fully colorable, so you can configure this to suit your needs, match the materials that you're using it with, or match the theme of the map that you are creating. The magic circles come in a variety of styles, including embossed and engraved, bloody, chalk, and glow options. The colorable embossed variety offers maximum flexibility, allowing you to shade things as raised, lowered, or colored. And bloody circles are in both written in blood and written out of blood, depending on whether you want to use positive or negative space for your symbols. Both of these variants are fully colorable, so you can tint it exactly how you want. There's the classic glow for a magical circle, and versions written in and out of chalk that are also colorable. In the Paths tool, you'll also find a collection of magical writing. You can use these paths to further create magical circles, or add additional flavor to any room that you want. They're very versatile and come in 10 different writing configurations, from basic and worn to different metallic options so that you can add an opulent touch to altars and other areas. There are also high contrast options for dark backgrounds and engraved and embossed to add depth. In the Bailiwiki Buildings pack, many new castle rooms have been added so that you can quickly and easily make your own castle maps, from bedrooms and closets to gardens and ballrooms and more. These work well with the existing walls within the pack, or you can draw in your own to fully customize your castle. This makes getting a base of a castle in Dungeon Draft faster than ever. Finally, in the Bailiwiki Buildings pack, there are also a new selection of roofs in both normal and snowy variants for creating town maps and other overhead views quickly and easily. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy all of these maps. I hope you uh, belly up to the bar and have a good time. Come to our Discord and let us know there if you've got ideas for other things that you would like us to make, whether it's 3D, whether it's scrolling maps, or whether it's it's regular old 2D, you know, levels based type stuff. We're we're just really listening to you guys as far as what you want to have in your adventures and things that are, you know, highly flexible. Those are the things that we're going for. So hopefully you guys like all of this. And in the meantime, thanks for supporting us and have fun making your maps.